Okay, so this video is about the turbo install on the 55 and I decided to place the turbos in the trunk and I know my trunk looks like a factory now with all the turbos and the suspension and everything but it is all pretty close to working. My original deadline for this was to get it done by September in time for the CSCS round uh, round 5 but I didn't get it done in time so I, I missed the CSCS round 5. Um, that's because it was really a difficult thing to do and uh, midway I just decided to screw it and just take my time with everything rather than rushing everything and trying to get it done. The system is not fully complete right now because it's a twin charge system that I'm working on and um, but right now the electronics are fully done. Um, and also I made some changes on the front. I've installed a new oil cooler just for better oil cooling and um, but to do that I had to get rid of the air conditioner condenser just because there wasn't enough space and also get rid of the power steering cooler, the factory power steering cooler and I had to add this other power steering cooler on the side um, also um, there's this charge pipe that now goes back all the way to the tur turbos the charge piping goes all the way from here from inside the car and back to the turbos I decided to pass it from inside the car because these are pretty thick 3 inch pipes if I passed them from underneath the car the car only has a ground clearance of 4 inches so probably not a good idea passing a 3 inch pipe underneath the car and the intercooler is at the back over there um, so basically the way the system works is um, the turbos are at the back and um, the pressure comes in from those 3 pipes on top goes to 3 intercoolers there's going to be a duct on the roof that I'm going to mount later on a roof scope that's going to draw air and to, through the intercoolers and basically yeah there's a lot of ducting work to do right now and then the air is going to come from here and there's two valves over here um, these valves are basically what's going to make the twin charge system work when when the car is just using the supercharger and not using the turbos it's going to breathe air from this air filter over here this um, throttle body is going to be open and the air is going to pass through here and go straight to the engine um, and this valve is going to remain closed the reason this valve is there is just so that the turbos have some load on them when they're spooling up and there's a pressure sensor right there going to the circuit over there and that will basically detect when the turbos are spooled up and when they reach a certain pressure and right when that happens um, this valve will close and this valve will open and simultaneously will disconnect the supercharger on the engine so basically the car will then go from supercharger to turbocharger and there shouldn't be any lag if that works perfectly but I'm still working on that there's a lot of programming work to do for that and a lot of wiring that I have to do to get all that working um, but the turbos are making boost right now and so far everything is looking good so I'll start off by explaining all the changes that I made to the front of the car and then later on move back to the turbos and um, explain how I did the turbo install and all of that. So I started off by removing the splitter at the front and to remove this first I had to remove those two hoses going to the uh, heat exchanger mounted on the splitter. And after that I just undid the four bolts at the bottom and I had an axle stand over there to uh, prevent the splitter from falling on me while I undid the bolts. And after that I just needed to take off those two cables on front of the splitter and um, then just drag the whole thing out. After this I got to the job of removing my radiators and um, to do that first I had to remove that metal bracket that sits on top of the radiators. Uh, once that was removed I had to remove my fan shroud along with the fan and then I had to drain all my fluids before I could actually pull out the radiators. While the fluids were draining I decided to remove my factory oil cooler since I wasn't going to need it anymore because I was replacing it with a bigger one and I think uh, the problem is the place where it's located it doesn't get too much airflow. it's located um, in front of the passenger side tire but I think now moving it to, to a place where it gets more airflow would probably help the oil temperatures even better so after this I just pulled out the radiators and the annoying part about this car is that the air conditioner condenser and the main radiator are basically connected together and you can't separately remove them you have to pull them both out together and then separate them when once you've removed them but once I had them out then I um, took out the air conditioner condenser since um, since I needed to get that extra space to fit the oil cooler over there I had to take that out and get rid of that and I think removing this will also help um, get more airflow to the main radiator so it might be better for cooling. Um, after this I just had to remove my power steering cooler. I was getting rid of my power steering cooler because this also takes a lot of space and 
Um, I had to move to a smaller one, not a smaller one, but one that takes less space. It's probably equally as effective as this one, but um, because this one takes a lot of space, I couldn't fit my oil cooler um, in front of the radiator because of this taking too much space. So while everything was out, I decided this was a good time to change my pulleys um, for the serpentine belt and for the supercharger belt. Um, that's because this car has these really cheap plastic pulleys that break all the time. And um, here's actually a picture of um, a pulley that broke on my Mercedes SL a few years back and it completely ripped the serpentine belt apart. And here's a picture from the E55. Just this year one of the pulleys, one of the idler pulleys broke, luckily on the driveway so it didn't um, cause any damage. But still these pulleys break all the time, it's better to replace them before they actually break. Um, so yeah, I went to the dealer to get a quote for all these pulleys and the dealer gave me a pretty ridiculous price. They were charging $4,000 for all these pulleys. So I decided not to get them from the dealer and I ended up ordering them online. Which um, which I believe was a few hundred dollars, I think probably around two hundred dollars for all of them. For the supercharger pulley and for the for one of the other metal pulleys, I didn't change the pulley itself, I just changed the bearing inside them, which saves you a lot of cost. Um, so yeah, definitely worth doing it yourself, don't take the car to the dealers. So after this I started to remove my supercharger and um, this wasn't necessary in my case but um, I needed to understand how the recirculating valve underneath the supercharger works. Um, that's the valve that basically disconnects the supercharger from the engine and I need to control that in order to, for my twin charge system to work. Um, so to remove the supercharger, you first need to remove those two surge tanks on top of the engine that sit on either side of the supercharger. There's basically, I think, 10 bolts on top of them and then a hose clamp at the back that you need to remove. And then that those just come off. After that, you need to remove the fuel injector rail, which is held in by four bolts. And after removing the bolts, you need to remove the fuel line going to it, but make sure to take out the fuel pressure before removing the fuel line. And once that's off, you can undo the connectors on all the injectors, the electrical connectors. Um, they're stuck for some reason, they're really hard to get off. Um, so I was using this plier to take them off. But once you do get all of them off, the injector rail should just come off. And after this, you will see, I believe, five bolts on each side. Um, they're located on either side of the intake runners. Um, when you remove these, that's basically all that's holding the supercharger in place. Um, but you still can't take out the supercharger right now because there's a lot of electrical lines and um, vacuum hoses going to the supercharger. The supercharger itself is pretty heavy, it weighs 35 kilograms. So lifting it out by yourself is pretty difficult. I did manage to do it by myself, but I wouldn't want to do it again because it is pretty heavy. And in case you drop it, you'll probably damage the supercharger, so it's probably not worth taking the risk. Now while I have the supercharger out, I'm also planning to replace the oil in there. And if you look right there, that's the plug for replacing the oil. It's usually really hard to get to, but since right now the supercharger is out, it's really easy. So once the fluid in the supercharger was replaced and I had tapped into the wires for the recirculating valve, it was time to put everything back together and then finally get to the part of installing the new oil cooler. So for the oil lines for the oil cooler, what I did was, these two metal lines are the lines that go to the factory oil cooler. And there's rubber lines over here that used to go down and to the factory oil cooler. But what I did was I went to a shop and uh, they, cut the, they cut the original lines off and crimped these new ones on. And they left, enough, they left them long enough that I could connect my oil cooler with them. And they also gave me this T over here using which I can um, get the oil feed for my turbos. Uh, so that's going to be helpful later on. Um, I know usually when you turbo the car there is an auxiliary oil outlet, but that, it's at a really weird location, that's why I didn't tap into that. So after I'd connected the lines, I just put the oil cooler and the power steering, the new power steering cooler in place. And it was still a really tight fit because there's just not an awful lot of space in front of the radiator in this car. Um, but I just made some brackets to bolt um, both the coolers in place and um, that was it for this. So after the oil cooler install and the power steering cooler install were done, I just had to take this um, oil feed line um, all the way back to the turbos at the back. And while I was doing that, I also worked on the charge piping um, coming from the turbo that delivers boost to the engine. This was easy enough. I just ordered one these um, aluminum tubes along with these silicone hoses from the internet and um, just fitted them all together. Um, this place is basically where the air conditioner blower used to go. I had to remove that air conditioner blower 
and pass the pipe from in there. Um, so yeah, the good thing is I didn't have to do any cutting at all for this. The only cutting I had to do was um, I had to bend this um, a firewall of the engine slightly back. There was already a hole here, but the hole wasn't big enough, that's so why I had to make it larger to pass this pipe from here. And the charge pipe goes from here inside the car to these two valves over here. These two valves basically control the switching from the turbocharger to the supercharger. The supercharger to the turbocharger. And goes to the intercooler and then finally back to the turbos. So now getting to the exhaust side, I had to link my exhaust to my turbos. And for that what I did was I just hung the turbos in place using the intake pipes. Because the intake was already done at this point. So that was the easier thing to do just so I had an idea of... Um, where the turbos needed to go and then according to that I just made the exhaust pipe and linked the turbos to the exhaust, the up pipe and the down pipe. So for making the exhaust flange that will connect to the turbo to the exhaust side, I got these flanges um, and I have to connect the tube to them. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to hammer the end of the tube square and it shouldn't be too hard because it's just exhaust tubing. And then hopefully it should go nicely onto the flange. Okay, so after quite a bit of hammering, now the end is perfectly square. And it fits onto the flange pretty well. There's going to be still some gap left on the side. But that can easily be filled when I weld it. So hopefully this should work fine. So next I just bolted multiple flanges together. Just so they don't work while I'm welding them. And then I just welded it. Next I had to connect my um, wastegates, since these turbos need external wastegates I had to um, connect this V-band that links to the wastegate and to do that I just cut this small piece of tube and I cut uh, I notched one side of the tube that connects to the up pipe and cut the other side flat so I could mount my um, V-band flange for the wastegate on the other side but first I needed to mark and cut a hole in the up pipe, uh, the pipe leading to the turbo just so the exhaust would flow through it um, to the wastegate and once the hole was done, I just put everything back together and welded it. So now to connect the turbo pipe to the exhaust, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to cut the pipe from here, which is just about the part where it starts to bend, um, and then make the connection. But I was cutting the exhaust using a reciprocating saw, but the saw wasn't strong enough, so later I used an angle grinder to complete the cut. After this, I just had to remove the rubber mount holding the muffler in place. And once that was removed, the whole thing just fell down. So after this I had to link my um, exhaust coming from the car to the turbo and for making this segment I just used J-tubing so I cut different sections of the J-tube off um, just to make the whole thing work. I just put different sections in place and saw how much more tube I needed and what angle I needed to cut it at um, just to complete the whole thing. And once that was complete it looked something like this and I welded all the different segments together. And once that was done, I linked this pipe to the pipe coming from the car. The brown pipe is the pipe coming from the car, and the silver pipe is the one I made. And then I just um, bolted all of this back in the car, and I was left with something like this. Just um, two tubes coming out from the trunk. And at this point, I was just pretty much ready to bolt the turbos in, and then do all the other stuff, like the oil connections. Okay, so now I'm pretty close to the point where I just want to start the car and see if everything works. Uh, let me just walk you through everything that I've done. Um, so I've mounted the turbos in and I've connected air filters right in front of the turbo. Um, I'll need to make ducting later on to guide cool air to those air filters because right now all the hot air coming from the intercoolers will be going through it into the air filters. Um, and I've done the oil connections and also oil drain lines at the bottom that go to the scavenge pump that will take oil back all the way to the engine. Now finally for returning the oil um, from the turbos back to the engine, I linked my return line to my valve cover. Um, I know in most turbo cars you will need to drain the oil lower than the turbos just because um, the, it, the oil needs to drain down due to gravity. But since I was using a scavenging pump it wasn't critical for me. I could return the oil anywhere. That's why I decided to return it in the valve cover since it's much easier to remove than removing the oil pan. So after taking the valve cover off I've given it a good cleaning on both sides and then I drilled a hole over here using a step drill 
And then I'm just going to put this um, thing in here where the, my line will connect. And the final time I put it on, I'm going to put some glue over here and then screw it in so it seals perfectly. Right now I didn't do all the electrical connections for the scavenge pump. I just have this temporary wire over here to turn it on and off just to test if the whole system works. Um, so the important thing to see right now is that when I start the car, whether it will blow any oil out or not, um, that will basically tell me whether my drain system, the scavenge pump, and uh, basically everything leading the oil back to the engine is working properly or not. Um, so yeah, I'll just leave the camera right here and then go and start the car. downpipe of the turbos um, I need to make a pipe that will go from here um, bend downwards then I need to cut another hole in here so the pipe will exit somewhere like around where the diffuser will go so basically it's gonna act like an exhaust blown diffuser um, and then for these two pipes they're also gonna go down and then exit backwards and for these two it's gonna be simple I have these um, bent pipes over here I just need to cut these to size and weld them to the um, waste gates, waste gate outlets. Um, but for the other one, um, the outlets from the turbos, the downpipes, um, I'm using this J tube to um, basically make the bends. So I'll basically cut segments of this to make the bends, and then um, the problem is I don't have enough J tube to complete the job. So for the rest of it, I will probably need to um, cut and weld the tubes to make the other bends at the bottom. So let's see how that goes. So here's what the downpipes looked like after they were complete and um, because I ran out of J-tubing um, for the two bends at the bottom I had to make those bends by cutting and welding tubes together which worked out okay but it was a lot of work welding all those tubes together. So once the downpipes were back in place I just put one additional rubber mount on the downpipes to support the weight of the turbos better and once everything was complete I went for a short test drive and um, the turbos were making boost and everything was okay so that was good. Uh, the boost wasn't going to the engine right now because I didn't want to connect it to the engine because it's not um, uh, the engine isn't tuned to take boost and the back pressure from the turbos um, so that's why I didn't I didn't test it to the extreme or anything I just made sure it was making boost and that's it but here's what the new system sounds like now um, obviously the quad AMG exhaust is gone but I really like the new sound I think it's, it sounds much better than before. that's everything for this video. Um, I know there's still a lot of work left on the car, mostly programming work and electronics, um, just programming everything, making everything functional, and then finally getting to the ECU tune, that's when the car will actually um, start making more power. Um, but my goal now is to basically finish everything before the winter and squeeze in one final track day, hopefully before the winter. So yeah, thanks for watching and let's hope everything goes well for the next part.